Finally, coding session. By now, you should know what Social Connect is and how it works. Let's build one dApp that uses the protocol and add three features. First, I'm going to be mapping an address with a social identifier, and I'm going to be using Twitter for this. Then, I'm going to be sending value to that identifier through the protocol Social Connect. And finally, I'm going to be decoupling that identifier from that address. So, let's jump to the code. First, we're going to create our project with Solo Composer as usual, and we will select just the React app version. Install the dependencies, go to the React app package and add a few libraries we're going to use. Solo Identity to interact with Social Connect, Next Auth to handle the login of social platforms and get, of course, the social identifier, and React icons, just to have a few icons to improve our UX. Then, let's configure our package.json. Because we're going to use identity and we will be working with Social Connect protocol, we need to add an additional library, Blind Threshold BLS. And for the Next.js project, we will need to add some configurations to our browser object. Then we will handle a few environment variables. So I created a .env file with two sections, one for the Twitter credentials, which is the social platform we will integrate within this example, and the variables for Social Connect. Very important. As you can see, these variables have the next public prefix. So let me be crystal clear here. This project is not a production ready project. If you're looking into this, you will need to remove these prefixes, create server functions to avoid exposing sensitive information and a more elaborated architecture that goes beyond the purpose of this video. Specifically with Twitter, you can create your account on the developer portal and create an app get the respective keys and place them on the .env file. And for the social connect variables, there are some example accounts that I'll be using for this example. A more elaborated explanation on what does these accounts do and how they interact with the protocol are in the second part of this mini series. Check that out. Let's get the APIs from the smart contracts we mentioned here in an ABI folder. Create a new utils folder and start with a constant file. Here, we will export the ABIs and the environment variables. Create a new file, web blinding client, and place the following functions used to interact with the protocol from a web app. If you want to know more about it, check the Social Connect GitHub repo on the identity markdown file. If you see on line 21, there is a reference to a file we don't have in our project yet. So let's add it to the public folder. Create an interface for the variables we will use to interact with Social Connect as an issuer. Also, I'm going to create an use is mounted hook to prevent rendering issues. I'll use it later, and this is just front end. Because I'm using next auth, I need to wrap the app with the library provider. Let's do that and check if everything works fine. Now let's start to work on our homepage. Let's do first all the imports we'll be using. Now define a couple of hooks. First, the use is mounted hook that I mentioned before, then a hook of type isocialConnect that will hold all the instantiated objects that I'll be using to interact with a protocol, and now let's define the next hooks by steps, steps that I'll explain in just a moment. For the first step, we just need the address from WACME use account hook. For the second, the session from Twitter, and on a separated hook, the resolution of the social identifier. For the third one, the identifier and address where we will send the value. Then let's create a use effect that will be called only once and create all the respective instances from the social connect interface parameters we defined before. Now let's define the steps for the UX. 
I've thought about five, where the last three are the ones we just defined before. First step is just the connection. It will display the address of the connected user and it will be active if there's an address. Second step is about the social login and it will be active if there's a session. Third step is about the mapping between the address and such social identifier and it will be active if there's an address and a session. Fourth step is about sending value using the protocol. It will be active if there is an user address and a resolved address. Fifth step is about deregistering an address from a social identifier, and it will be active if there is an address and a session. Let's go now with the functions. Define an identifier login function where we will pass the session to a component to render the view together with the username and some additional information. See here how we call sign in and sign out accordingly. For this to work, we need to configure the server side next auth callback. Go to pages, API, create an auth folder, and inside a next auth file, set the Twitter provider. and the callback configurations to get the username. Now let's create the session core component I was mentioning. And because this is mostly UX, I'm gonna paste the code. Let's go back to the home page and create an additional use effect to get just the social identifier from the session. Prepare a transaction that we will call with the address resolved from Social Connect protocol. And now let's go to the meat of the session, the main functions. Let's define register attestation function. But before, to interact with the protocol, we need to check the quota. So to find a new function, check and top up Otis quota. In this one, first, we need to obtain the remaining quota the issuer has. If there is no quota, then check how much allowance the issuer provided to Otis payment contract. If there is not enough allowance, then let's increase it. Once we have enough, pay to Otis payment contract. How much? Well, the quota we just defined before. Now, we're sure we have enough quota. Go back to the register function and let's get first the obfuscated identifier. Once we have it, pass it together with the connected address and the current timestamp to the federated attestation contract to register it. Now let's create a function to look up the address from the identifier. First, we will need to get the obfuscated identifier again, so let's not duplicate the code and move this to its respective function. And to get the attestations, let's ask to the federated attestation contract and get the first account. And the final function, the register identifier. To accomplish this, let's get the obfuscated identifier again and pass it together with the user address and the issuer address to the federated attestation contract to revoke the attestation. We're done with the functions. We just need the UX. And again, because that is not the purpose of the session, I'm just gonna paste it. You're free to analyze later the code. It is divided into the steps we defined before. Now let's run the app. I'm gonna connect the wallet, sign with my Twitter account, map my username 0xNestor with the user A address. Then let's switch to user B account and search user A address for my Twitter username I get it, and I'll send some cello. Finally, I switch again to user A and deregister my Twitter username. That's it. Let me know what you will build and see you in the next one.